everyone. Today we're going to learn how to do this awesome hoverboard. I can stand on it. As you can see, it it is stable. I can um, I don't know, make it lower or higher. And I don't know. So let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is to take the first person template. This is my favorite one and I'm going to take the starter content just because I like it. Uh, put the name and create project. I'm going to come back when it's created. So here we are. Um, this is... I, I didn't change anything. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to create an actor in the content folder. And I'm going to name it Hoverboard. Open it. Okay. So the the first thing we want to add is an static mesh, and make it parrot. If you ha if you saw uh, my tutorial on how to do a rocket, um, you probably know how to do this already. But I'm going to explain it again. Um, we have to attach the static mesh to the default scene root because we want to activate the physics and we can't do it Well, I, first, I have to select a mesh before I'm going to take the cube um, We can't if we activate if we activate the physics without it being the root component uh, it won't work so You have to attach it um, assign a mesh and then simulate physics. Uh, the linear damping and the uh, uh, damping and the angular damping. I'm going to set them to five because I like it. There's no, um, I don't know. You can set any value you want. So uh, then I want to add a, um, how it's called a thruster, a physics thruster, and then an arrow component, arrow component. Why is that? Because the physics thruster has no direction itself. I mean, you can, you can't know which direction is it pointing to. So we assign an arrow in order to know it. Um, by the way, this we we don't want the hoverboard to to thrust to the right. So we have to rotate it in the y-axis minus ninety degrees. And now. I'm going to modify the mesh because I don't like it this way. Um, in the C scale, I'm going to say 0 0.01 and I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it 10, for example. It's a bit big, but it'll work. Um, now, where is my physics thruster? Where is it? To delete it, thruster, and the arrow to it. Okay. Now we are talking. Okay, so um. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, minus 90 degrees, and I'm going to move it to the corners. Um, I'm going to make the grid a little bit, uh, the snap size a little bit higher, so I can place it where I really want to. And that's there. I duplicate it, assign the arrow, and move it. there and I duplicate everything again assign the arrows like that and move them one and two so now we should have 
all the thrusters set. Which one is this? And what about the arrow? Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, so there you go. We have four thrusters. Everything set up. Okay. We want to auto-activate them. Because the moment this, the game starts, we want them activated. So we auto-activate them. Um, and I'm going to do something a little bit strange. But this is just for comfort. You don't have to do this. I'm going to create a variable of type... Well, I'm going to name it thrusters and it's going to be of type thruster component and it's going to be an array so in the begin play I'm going to take all of the thrusters like this um, and I'm going to add them to the to the um, grid to the array, I'm sorry. Add. And now, well, it's not going to be pretty because I don't want to waste time in this. But it will work, that is the important thing. Um, there you go the exec path and that's it okay so now in the event tick um, I want to take the array and for each loop through every thruster so in, in, in this configuration if we add more thrusters we have to add them to the array and that's it it, it will automatically do it uh, everything else so in the loop body um, what I want to do is to um, well we have to do an uh, line trace by channel uh, in order to know the distance to the floor and in, and when we know the distance to the floor then we can assign a thrust um, to know the distance to the floor, I'm going to make a new function get d to floor. Get distance to floor. The input is going to be a thruster component, and I'm going to name it t because I'm lazy. And well, what I'm going to say is get world location and. Um, Yes, and a line trace by channel. Be careful because there's a multi line trace by channel. We don't want that. We want the line trace by channel. The start is going to be the world location, and the end is going to be well, we're going to take the forward, ver the forward vector and we're going to multiply it by the by the distance, the distance we want it to be. So I'm going to make a new variable called height of type float, and it's not it's not going to be an array, and another one called uh, max thrust. We're going to use them later. Um, right now I'm going to assign a value for this. It's going to be a hundred to start with and I'm going to multiply it here multiply whoops multiply float that's it and that's the end well I'm sorry we have to add them together that's it um, I'm going to draw for a duration for 0, 0,2 seconds um, and I'm going to break the heat and we want to say if it hit anything um, th this variable um, is used to check 
if it if the line trace hit anything. So we we are going to check that, and if it did, then we want to get the the distance. And in order to do that, we want to get the world loca location and break it to get the C. And in the impact normal, uh, I'm sorry, in the uh, impact point, we want to break the vector 2 and we subtract both C's. So now we have the height, the, the distance to the floor in the C axis, which is what we wanted. So now return node and we want to add an output that is the distance. Type float and put it there. Uh, if it didn't hit the floor, then uh, the distance is going to be a, a big number. Like that. This is the biggest number you can put into a float. Uh, so this will do. By the way, if you want to check, for example, if you want it to hover... Um, on the floor, just on the floor, and don't inter interact with other objects. In the uh, here, you have to cast to the objects uh, you want it to interact with. Okay, cast to, for example, floor, and it will in it will uh, work. So now, I want to be I want the function to be pure. And we take the function here. We take the t, and um, we're going to clamp the value. I'm sorry, the, to map range clamped. Um, the distance can go between zero and the height. If it's zero, if it's uh, if the distance is zero, then we have to thrust a lot. So the max thrust. And if it, the distance is the height, then the height or bigger, then we have we have to thrust th zero. Um, I'm going to take the thruster and set strength. We execute the path, and the return value is going to be the thrust strength. And that's it. That's it. That's all should work i think it will do but i'm not sure so i'm going to check okay let's see okay i think it works but oh i forgot one thing um i didn't set the max thrust to a number, so I'm going to set it to that number. Well, it's too big. That number, for example. And I'm going to make the height bigger because that was... Mm, that wasn't the height I wanted. So now it should really work. Uh, well, it's not. I don't know why. <laughs> why is happening this? Okay, let me check one thing. Um, I'm going to copy the value I had to the max thrust. And let's see. Whoa. I'd say it's okay. Okay, I see the problem. Uh, it doesn't have a physics thruster in one of them. It's this one. So let's see where it is. It is there. What? What? Okay, now it should work. Yes, it does. Okay, so you can see it works now. It hovers and I can place an object in the in the line trace by channel and it simply will avoid it. So you can see it, 
it will auto balance itself and I don't know it's pretty cool I think it's pretty cool and in the next tutorial in the next uh, part of this tutorial we're going to learn how to control it and how to make the the character jump to it because right now we can jump just this and we want to reach up there so um, I hope you like this you learned something new if you had if you have any doubts please comment them down below and see you in the next one goodbye